Bridges. They connect two parts of land that are separated by a river, a steep valley, or some other obstacle that makes it hard to get from one side to the other. And in any war, bridges are of exceptional strategic interest, both for the defending and the attacking side. Welcome to Talking Tactics, where this week, as you've probably already figured out, it's about bridges. In the early hours of Monday, the 17th of July, two explosions caused substantial damage to the Kerch Bridge, which connects occupied Crimea with mainland Russia. There were mixed reactions as usual, while Ukraine celebrated. A fuming Vladimir Putin vowed revenge for this terrorist act. Why was he so angry? Well, apart from Crimea being of substantial symbolic importance for both sides, the annexation of the peninsula in 2014 and the connection of it to mainland Russia via this $4 billion bridge was one of Putin's greatest self-boasted successes. It's basically his project, showing how he literally reconnected Crimea to Russia. But enough of the Russian talk. In real terms, the bridge is one of Crimea's main lifelines, not only for the military and trade, it also serves as the main pathway for the thousands of Russians who are currently there on holiday. It's also the safest road for those who flee again when the war that they started all of a sudden does get a little bit too close. It's not the first time this bridge got hit, like in October 2022. It's probably also not the last. To hit the bridge is a huge success for Ukraine, because although just one day after the explosions, the traffic on the bridge was partially reopened, a lot of transport, especially larger columns, will have to be rerouted through the occupied territories in South and East Ukraine, putting them in range of more Ukrainian weapons and therefore much more at risk. And this brings us to the larger picture. There are around 23,000 rivers and around 28,000 bridges in Ukraine. Of course, not all of these constitute strategically important landmarks or crossroads, and not all are suitable, neither in terms of width nor construction, to transport heavy military equipment. Nonetheless, these facts hopefully help anyone to understand no bridges, no advance. In the first months of the war alone, over 300 bridges were destroyed in Ukraine, some by the Ukrainian army to halt the Russian advance, others by Russia to cut off Ukrainian supply lines. The battle for bridges is a vital part of the struggle for the strategic upper hand. So we would like to introduce the most significant bridges in Ukraine and what role they have played or will play during the war. Number one, the Irpin Bridge. It connects the small satellite cities of Irpin and Bucha to the capital over the Irpin River. Most of you will remember the dramatic pictures of civilians fleeing over the rubble while the icy waters of the river rush beneath them. From this bridge, the road leads directly to the capital, Kyiv. Blowing it up was an unavoidable measure to ensure the defense of Ukraine's largest and most important city. It was not the only bridge destroyed, however. Also, the bridge connecting Irpin to Bucha between the two cities was hit. The Kyiv bridges. There are seven altogether, two for trains. If the battle for the capital had actually reached the city, these bridges connecting the two banks, but also essentially the eastern and western parts of the country that are otherwise entirely separated by the river, would have become extremely vital points. The Kahovka Dam crossing. As we know, Russia blew up the dam on June 6, causing a massive environmental and humanitarian disaster. The main bridges in the city of Izium were destroyed at the beginning of the full-scale invasion to slow down a Russian advance. The strategically important town of Izium lies on the road between Kharkiv and Slavyansk. The bridges on the main road between Slavyansk and Liman, one for railroad and one for cars. This bridge is not that known, but it is hellishly important. The town of Liman is a major railroad hub used by Russia to resupply its troops. The bridge connected Liman to Slavyansk, one of the major cities in Donetsk that was briefly under separatist control in 2015. The Kersh Bridge as discussed at the beginning of the episode. The Chonhar bridges are both rail and road crossings, connecting mainland Ukraine to occupied Crimea. Just this June, they were hit, apparently by a British Storm Shadow missile, to cut Russian supply routes. Last but not least, the Antonivsky Bridge in Kherson. The story of this bridge is basically the story of the war. It's 1.4 kilometers long, and thus the largest and most important crossing point of the river Dnipro in southern Ukraine. While it was under Russian occupation, it was a target for Ukraine to cut off Russian supply lines. Now, the tides have turned. Ukrainian forces have managed to cross the river and are holding on to what is known as a bridgehead on the Russian-controlled side, which they have been trying to get rid of with suicide drones, artillery and even ballistic missiles to prevent the Ukrainian army from gaining too much of a foothold and start bringing large amounts of troops over the water. Building bridges. When bridges are destroyed, you need new ones. And that takes time. In this time, you are vulnerable. 
In addition, the building of so-called platoon bridges is described as one of the most deadliest and complicated undertakings. In very simple terms, you need to advance to the river. You need to cross it and establish what is called a bridgehead to control the other side and shield the troops that build the bridge from direct fire. Most armies have two types of bridges. The first are bridges that create so-called dry gap crossings. In this case, the bridge doesn't touch the water, but is usually supported by pillars. The second are wet gap crossings, or crossings in which the bridges are supported by the water, so they float. Either they are connected from one end to the other completely, or ferried and pulled in some way. The Russian army's primary dry gap bridging capabilities are provided by the TMM-3 and the MTU-72. The wet gap bridging capabilities, the older PMP floating bridge system and the more modern PP-2005 floating bridge system. Anyway, as described, building bridges costs time and manpower. If used correctly, the opposing force can use this time to turn the tides. When the Russian forces were advancing on Kyiv, damaging the Irpin River Dam on the so-called Kyiv Sea and flooding the adjacent basin was probably one of the most decisive factors in the defense of the city, since the Russians had managed to hold on and establish a pontoon bridge close to the village of Moshun, just outside the capital. During an attempt to cross the Donetsk River near Rubizhne in May last year, the Russian army lost almost the entire 74th Motorized Rifle Brigade. More than 80 units of Russian equipment were also damaged. Since the war began, the Russians have lost 12 boats and 53 sections of floating bridge according to the Dutch open source website Oryx. Anyway, that's it for this week. We hope you found our video interesting. Let us know in the comments, hit like and subscribe and see you next week.